good afternoon and it's a pleasure to be with all of you today and take a few minutes to share my thoughts about making india solar and wind the previous speaker has already set the tone of the state of affairs but i would like to reflect a bit over what is happening world over and where we stand and how we can tweak our policies to get the best of both uh, when i look at solar just to, to give you a brief in the last 40 year journey of solar has been like this 1975 the cost of solar was 102 dollars per watt and at that time the manufacturing was just 2 megawatts in the whole world 2015 the scenario is that the solar panel is available anywhere at about 50 cents ending 2015 today it's already at 40 and the demand has shot off to 60000 megawatts so size and scale i wanted to keep it in mind this is something uniquely that has happened it's a technology product everybody wants it world over there is a huge opportunity for solar but at the same time have we got the capability to adjust ourselves to such dramatic changes is the question before us various countries ventured including india but i think uh, chinese government has declared solar as a national priority and wanting to be global leader whatever it takes to be between 2006 to 2010 they have supported the industry to such an extent it is government of china versus the individual companies across the world you ask for it it was available almost every province started a joint venture with the manufacturer of a gigawatt scale whereas rest of the world was talking about 100 megawatt and 200 megawatt so land is available plenty as you want in every province power which is critical to success of solar industry was available at concessional rates interest costs which was mentioned by the previous speaker also was also made available at on tap at the rates required both for capital as well as working capital so if all the ingredients are made available there is no reason for them not to succeed and for the rest of the world to keep looking at them and collapse the collapse and impact was there not only on india starting from us europe some of you must be aware that two major global companies bosch and bp solar most virtually closed down their operations in 2013 and exited the business and japan no expansion and rest of the world no expansion so that's the story and that's the backdrop under which we are in the capital cost during this period of 2006 to 16 i'll just zero in back to the last 10 years have changed almost by one fourth if you were investing 100 dollars in 2006 today if you invest 25 dollars you will get the same capacity if in 2006 the price was 3 dollars to 4 dollars today the price is 50 cents so whether you take a 40 year horizon or 10 year horizon you are clearly heading in a direction of continued fall in rates of returns on investment and also ability to compete with chinese is dwindling by each company when i look at india when the new government came to power in may 2014 some background was given regarding anti dumping duty the government was faced with the challenge whether to have a low cost of power or otherwise have renewable power at all cost i was also part of the manufacturer as mozabar solar we were one of the early investors in 2006 with a objective of taking it to a global scale of gigawatts and we also pleaded with the government government said okay 
we want cheap power because we want to reach 24 by 7 power to all. Whatever it takes, we will do it. We will also protect. The larger goal is power at the lowest cost. In the process, they ended up following a dual policy of continued import to China while encouraging domestic manufacturing. But domestic manufacturing did not kick off the way in which they wanted. That's why the trouble continues even today. As far as uh, I see where we stand, what we can do, how to move forward, when I look at it, uh, you must also understand that Chinese companies, while they have grown in size, there are almost four companies with five gigawatt scale. And out of the global capacity of 70,000 megawatt, nearly about 55 to 60,000 megawatt is in China itself. So virtual dominance. But do we know that most of these companies have got a market capitalization of less than a billion dollar? None of them are making any great money. They are on the verge of collapse out of the top 10 companies. Three companies have owned up LDK, recently Ingli, prior to that Sun, uh, Suntech. So they have built enterprises which are virtually collapsing. Now, in this backdrop, what I would like to recommend is like this. Our ambitious policy, 100,000 megawatt, is laudable, and we must do something to ensure making India is successful. Existing manufacturing capacities in India is only about 1,200 megawatt for cells and about 5,000 megawatt for modules, and that too, nearly half the capacities are not working. Most of these companies are sick. Most of these companies are in corporate debt restructuring. Most of these companies cannot borrow money for working capital or expansion. That is the real state of affairs of all these companies. Barring a few, only exception I can say is Tata Solar. Other than that, almost all the companies are in a state of virtual distress. What we need is the large scale capacity build up in the country for Make in India to succeed and also to ensure that we have a Make in India product in the country. If you ask me, is the technology limitation? No. What else is the limitation? I will say that it has turned to financial engineering. We can build 100,000 megawatt. We can build 10,000 megawatt of manufacturing capacity if finance is available on pipe. That is the biggest challenge. I think when I look at the Indian enterprise, they are now risk covered after what has happened in the last five years in the power sector, a lot of people turning to NPAs. Nobody is keen to invest, invest in manufacturing. As my colleague has mentioned in the previous uh, presentation, four stages of manufacturing. One is solar uh, polysilicon and ingots, followed by wafer, followed by cells and modules. Polysilicon, ingots, and wafer, a lot of people have talked about it, including Reliance. but Practically, everybody has, yeah, has uh, got out of it, and they are not there. Now, Adani is talking of putting manufacturing capacity. When you look at cells, there is capacity, but it is unutilized. Out of 1,200 megawatts, only 500 megawatts under utilization. Modules, similar is the story. My recommendation will be like this. Follow your dual policy. Invite the foreign companies to put up large-scale new manufacturing at lower capital cost, lower manufacturing cost, encourage them. And with substantial capital in, in, uh, incentives, substantial incentives on the issue of financial cost power, etc. These capacities will take three to four years to come up. It is not going to come up overnight. In the meantime, follow a policy for encouraging domestic manufacturing industry, which is in distress. Out of the 1,200 megawatts plus 5,000 megawatts of module, all I recommend is create a stress release, uh, relief fund, uh, or otherwise uh, a package for revival of the solar sector. All it calls for is approximately 250 crores. You use this fund to revive the companies which are sick in terms of working capital requirements, which banks are not willing to give. But you can encourage and give it to these companies working capital support. Even at higher interest rates, it's welcome. Second, 
with marginal money capacity expansion can be achieved because a lot of capacities are there but they are not moving up because you need some capital and banks banks have virtually blocked any inflow of capital into these companies if these uh, steps together with capital subsidy for expansion and also concessional rates of interest which my earlier speaker also mentioned that ireda used to finance something if they can restart this it will go a long way at least to strengthen our domestic manufacturing base and i know that today's china is under distress the prices have fallen for your information between january to uh, august by about 25% what was about 50 cents is today about 38 cents per watt it will keep falling because neither they are making money they also want to get rid of their inventories and finally we will be creating in this country lot of non performing assets by these imports where you are paying 100% in advance uh, payment and also there is no controls on the performance related issues and we will get a cheap power plant but it may not perform for 25 years so my recommendation is follow dual policy continue large scale manufacturing setups give concessions capital and also operating concessions these capacities will come up in 2 to 3 years build up a 10000 megawatt capacity existing plants rejuvenate them by a stress release fund you have to have only about 250 crores it's not that too much we are talking about it can act as a catalyst for restarting the companies which are not able to go on their own because of the banking restrictions thank you thank you very much sir